The number one hindrance to revival in America is evangelism. We made it easy for people to come forward and say a little prayer and go out. Number one, are you saved? Yeah, from what? Oh, from hell. Are you saved from lust? Are you saved from pride? They don't know. Talk about the witness of the Spirit that John Wesley preached on more than anything else. They don't know what you're talking about. They'll sing blessed assurance and they have no assurance. The hindrance, number one, is we made it so easy for people to come forward. They go out at the door. I watched some recently. They had to get out of the door. They were lighting cigarettes. They weren't going home under anguish. <coughs> Spurgeon said when he was 15, he was under conviction of sin for weeks and weeks and weeks. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat. When do you get conviction like that? Dear God, our people, they're, they're a bit upset in the meeting. They go out. They go back to sin. They go back and sit before TV till midnight. There's no concern. There has to come an awakening in the church to the peril. Those loved ones of yours at the end of the table, they don't go to church. No, they're going to hell. Why don't you say it? Where are your children? What's your ambition for your boy? And these boys, have, they, they got prayer lives. Two of them have got tremendous prayer lives and they're my joy. I would be totally unhappy if they were anything else. They'd never be millionaires, they'd never be rich. But they know God, they're laying up treasure in heaven. And our young people, you see, it's not a case of getting the family, getting the Bible back in the schools, get the Bible back in your home. Duncan Campbell, I spent many hours in prayer with Duncan Campbell. He used to pray and weep and groan. I said to him, well, what was the condition? He had, what, revival 1949? He said, well, Brother Raven, at that time, after breakfast in the morning, they lifted all the dishes off the kitchen sink, off the table, put them in the kitchen sink, and Daddy got the Bible, and he read a psalm, or a psalm usually, commented on it, and the children had to memorize shorter catechism. You see, maybe the greatest hymn writer we ever had was Isaac Watts. He wrote, When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross, he wrote, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come, he wrote, From Martin to Zion. Wonderful man of God. But do you know he had a catechism, catechism for children under seven years of age? And you couldn't move up in a, in a class in Sunday school until you'd memorized it. Then he had another catechism for children from seven to 14 years of age. Then he had another catechism for people 14 and up. What does a good book say? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so I said, well, are you give me the secret of revival. The seed had been in the hearts of those children for 10 and 15 years. Then the Holy Ghost comes and sends somebody along, and that seed begins to germinate. The Word of God is quick and powerful. Where is it? It's first in my heart. But then the Holy Ghost breathes on it. It's though I have a little spark in my heart. The Holy Ghost breathes on it. It comes into a flame. Your number one concern should be your family. I went to preach at a certain college. I had a good time. The second time I went, a guy came and he said, I want to thank you for coming. He said, God moved on my heart last time you were here. Fine. And he said, I believe in you. I said, what do you mean you believe in me? He said, because you've raised three boys that are a credit to you. Two wonderful preachers. My precious wife did most of it. I was away touring in prayer. But I spent hours in prayer for them. And my number one, even if I was in a big church in some other country, number one today, Lord, the first thing I cover my family with the precious blood, I believe the Holy Spirit will talk to them. Dear God, when Paul was 16 years of age, he prayed more hours than I prayed. He would pray till one and two in the morning in an old part of a mansion we had in Ireland. And all the men I've known have been men of prayer. And it costs something. But you see, your ambition should be to see your spiritual offspring in your home, your spiritual offspring in the church. If I were in a church, I would have a nucleus of about 10 young men every week and, and talk to them about the things of God, particularly in the life of prayer. I'd read some of the great characters that God has made because they're made of the same stuff as us. I wouldn't be bothered about a big church. Why didn't Jesus take the 5,000? He fed them. They didn't follow him. He didn't feed the 5,000 in the church. He didn't feed the 4,000 in the church. He manifested his power. 
He had 12, and they weren't all good. Thomas Doubting, look at the mess that Judas made. But prayer is a secret. You know that. You make up your mind you're going to give time to prayer. The devil will fight it more than anything else. Your phone will ring off the hook. Visitors will come. Somebody will say, come and preach at our church. Why do you go conduct a revival in somebody else's church when your own is dead? 